When do you think the first human being will step foot on Mars? I, you don't like timelines, but is this something, and, and you're very much focused on kind of the short term of uh, incredible progress that's happening, and that makes total sense. But there is the Mars plan that, that was it the origin of the commercial space flight efforts. Um, do you still see and dream about that day? Let me be clear that I don't want to go to Mars, <laughs> but um, I do think if you're if you're making me guess a timeline for when humans will walk on Mars, I even a year ago I still would have said by the end of 2020, like the 2020s decade, you know. Um, so by December 31st, 2029, I thought humans would have walked on Mars. I'm starting to think that's still too optimistic. But I do, I, I definitely think by 2040, like I, I for sure think that I, and I really think it's, it's just hard to predict that curve, you know, that, that project out that curve. We're going to go from feeling like it's impossible to like, it's feeling like it's enough. You know, it could be another, by the end of this decade, JFK type moment, especially if China steps up with a space race, Yeah, it could, it could be like, uh, all right, NASA, NASA kind of says, all right, this Elon fella, <laughs> like really make this a gigantic effort. Well, and if Starship works out as planned, and as as NASA has invested in human landing system, they're relying on SpaceX to land on the moon. If SpaceX can land on the moon, they can land on Mars. Now, whether or not the life support and the human considerations of, of long-term space flight missions and high radiation and blah, 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 refueling on Mars is a huge, huge, huge deal. They definitely could send a Starship to Mars um, and land, ideally land in one piece on Mars, as soon as they can land on the moon, they can land on Mars, basically. I mean, those two things are very... In some ways, Mars is almost easier. If you can use... Because you can use the atmosphere to slow down. It actually doesn't take that much more Delta V to, to actually land on Mars than it does. Because on the moon, you don't have any... You have to first get out to the moon, then orbit the moon. You know, you have to slow down. Every one of those is a maneuver change. Then you have to slow your orbit until it coincides, you know, hits the moon. And then you have to slow down enough to not explode when you hit the moon. So there's a lot of delta V there, a lot of change in velocity. Um, Mars is is actually, by the time you kind of crunch the numbers, it's, it's relatively similar. It's just a lot more difficult, like timeline-wise and, you know, accuracy and all of these other communication. You know, there's a lot of other things, obviously, involved. I'm glossing over it, making it sound easy. It's not. But, um, but you know, I, I think if, I, I think there's a real decent chance we could see, see a Starship vehicle land on Mars uh, uncrewed by the end of the decade, though. End of the decade. I mean, there's also a sociological element, maybe a political one, where I think you're allowed to take more risks with Mars than you are with the moon. Because we've yeah. done the moon, 1969. Yeah. It's been a while. So PR-wise, you have to be much safer. Yeah. With Mars, like, everyone's, like, it's super dangerous, like, super, like, so yeah. you could take a little more risk. 100%. Think, especially with, uh, with, with manned missions.